What are the most tear-jerking, heartbreaking, and soul-crushing Phineas and Ferb songs ever? I know you think this show couldn't possibly be that deep once you've listened to songs like Simp or There's a Platypus Controlling Me, but trust me, the show's got a great deal of beautifully written and extremely relatable songs. So these are the top 10 most emotional Phineas and Ferb songs ever, according to me anyway, so you let me know your choices and let's go already, we've got a lot of crying to do. I just feel so defeated, I feel so alone. <laughs> Number 10, Little Brothers. Then came another little brother of our own. This is probably the quintessential sad Phineas and Ferb song, and I believe almost everyone remembers about it. After the sudden realization that she acted like a psychopath all along, Candace rethinks her relationship with her brothers as Stacy performs the song. In the meantime, a montage of moments from the show highlights how Phineas and Ferb have always been there for their sister, despite Candace never gave a damn about them. Yeah, I make her sound like a monster, but she's a good person on the whole. If you consider this song is part of a dream that's inside of a second dream, then it kinda gets less impactful, but it's still very touching anyway. The reason why I'm not ranking this higher though is because half of the song is just Stacy over explaining what Little Brothers means. Cause you're younger, we're related, and you're boys. I get that you're writing more than 200 musical numbers for this show, so creativity might be lacking at times, but you can't write a song based on dictionary entries only. Maybe the writers were looking for a way to minimize the tension here, but I don't think that was necessary considering how wacky most of the episode was. Yes, I'm talking about the giant talking Pappin Master Zebra. I'm just as confused as you are, Kevin. Number 9, Daki Momo is my friend. When I was small, the world was such a strange place. And that was all until I saw his strange face quacking in slow mo. Not acting age appropriate is a recurring theme in the show, and this song kinda embodies this as it shows how hard it is for Candace to grow up. That's always been a key component of her characterization, as she wants to be mature, but she still struggles letting go of her childhood. Daki Momo has probably been the one thing that kept Candace company while she was little, and since she either had to suffer the loss of her father or go through her parents' divorce, it makes sense she got so attached to this character. Daki Momo has always been a constant in her life, and now she has a hard time letting go of him because of how important he's been. With her father gone, her mother always busy buying groceries all the time, and her brothers having such a great brotherly bond, she had no one else to rely on. Except in all this, she's completely forgetting about Stacy, and that's the sad part if you ask me. Number 8, Big Honking Hole in My Heart. I just don't know what to do. There's a nerd shape. After a 30 second argument about recycling I guess, Buford and Baljeet stop being friends once and for all. However, through the power of duets and montages of course, they later realize how much they love hating each other and wanna go back to being friends. But that's like just a few hours later, that's how quickly it all happened. Apparently, just spending one afternoon apart from each other is tragic for them. Imagine the panic attacks they might have at night. The song is great, but a tiny bit too cheesy. I get that they really care for each other, but to the point of having big, tearful, lugubrious eyes, really? They don't even look sad, it just seems like they're high. Number 7, I Walk Away. I walk away from you, my friend. Not my favorite song, and way too short to be higher on the list, but I Walk Away does serve its purpose pretty well in the Second Dimension movie, as Perry leaves to secretly turn himself in, not knowing whether he'll ever be able to see Phineas and Ferb again. And all this right after they've had their first fight. 
the one and basically only line of the song, I hope this is not the end of all the times we figured out how to seize the day, hits pretty hard when you think about it, as Perry has always been there and felt part of the boys' activities, even though he couldn't really show it. It's pretty depressing how the entire time in the show, he just could not show how much he cared about his family. Imagine loving someone but never being able to tell them. Aw, oh, poor beaver, doc, person. Number 6. Living with Monkeys I'm not a fan of Candace's breakdown earlier in the episode, cause they made it too wacky and not emotional at all, and the final lines of the song get a bit wacky too in my opinion, it's kinda anticlimactic, but still, the song is amazing and it perfectly depicts this sense of ineptitude people feel when everything in their life seems to be falling apart. Candace is fed up with all of society's pressures, wondering if all of that is actually worth it at the end of the day. Those lines about people toying with your emotions and living but simply going through the motions really prove how the show can totally tug at the audience's heartstrings when it wants to. But I guess it's always been kind of afraid of getting too sentimental. Of course, we wouldn't want kids to find out about the existence of sadness, my goodness, no. Number 5. A Better Best Friend You were always there for me, on you I could depend for all those Candace haters out there, this song proves that there is at least a glimpse of humanity in this girl, who, for the first time in her life, is way too lost in her thoughts about her best friend that she doesn't even notice her brother's doings. As we mentioned before, it's Stacy, the one presence in Candace's life that she could always rely and depend on. So with this song, Candace regrets letting go of her friendship with Stacy and realizes she's been treating her like trash for years. This song also has a demo version, sung by Martin Olsen, if I'm not mistaken, with a few more verses and the repetition of the final chorus, but unfortunately the demo is nowhere to be found now, so I really hope someday either Povenmire or someone else will share it with us again, because it really was so good. In fact, I wish they didn't cut those verses in the final version, because they really would have helped the song make an even more memorable impact on the audience. Number 4. Only Trying to Help This song is so fabulously performed that it really makes you connect with the girls and understand their sense of estrangement. And I've just learned that word. However, I admit I always found this song to be kind out of character for the two of them. I understand why Candace would feel this way given the events of the episode, so fine. But what about Isabella? Why is she so upset? It's definitely not because she's the only girl in their friend group, and I doubt it's because of how Buford treated her, cause since when has she ever allowed him to push her around? So I don't know, I got mixed feelings about that, but anyway, the song is still phenomenal, as well as my go-to song when I'm feeling down. On an unrelated note, I'm a huge fan of how in the Russian version of the song, Isabella sings her last line instead of just saying it. Number 3. Time Spent Together it's just about the time we spend with our family and with our friends. It's just about the time spent together. It's so satisfying how the last thing the characters do in the main series is sharing memories of the time they spent together, with, again, a montage in the background and, of course, it's all done through song. This one hits you hard both for the lyrics in the first half and for the nostalgic recap in the second one, cause this song basically marks the end of an era. It's got this bittersweet feel to it where you enjoy the song cause the second half is a banger, but you cry your soul out at the thought of the series ending. As fitting as whips goodbye, I just tear up every time I see that. 
The second part might not be sad, perhaps, but it's definitely emotional. Anyone want some pie? This part always gets me, because I want some pie, and I haven't had any in a while. Oh god. Number two, what might have been? I'm sorry, it's just, that pie looks so good! And though I want it so much more, I guess you'll always be my friend. Nothing hurts more than thinking of the past, of what was and what might have been had things gone differently. So this song is pretty depressing, sure, but I don't consider it heartbreaking just for the whole idea of this love that could never be, but it's mostly for Isabella. I don't care for the couple stuff as much as for Isabella's inner turmoil and the depression that accompanied her for more than 10 years. Seriously, take the pain she went through that summer, multiply it by 4 so you get 1 year, then do it again times 10. She got her happy ending, but she got it way too late. She deserved it so much sooner. I'm also glad we finally get Phineas's point of view as well in this song, because it's basically the only sad song he ever sang, except for Where Did We Go Wrong. He is the embodiment of positivity, so it makes sense that all of his songs are cheerful, but a sad one every once in a while couldn't possibly hurt. And again, of course, there's a montage, and this time-lapse thing is of them growing up and Isabelle's frustration growing as well. Just beautiful, beautiful animation. <laughs> oh god, I love pie! And number one, City of Love. Oh, how can he not feel the same way? When we're scrolling down the shots and he says... If this song doesn't get you to sympathize for Isabella, I don't know what does. She's not even my favorite character, but hell, this little girl is the personification of sadness. I just want her to be happy and get her man. How perfect could this be in the city of love? This is Isabella's first real chance at romance, as she ends up alone with her loved one in the city of love and hopes that Paris's charm will make Phineas fall in love with her, I guess? I'm not sure. She just wants to spend time together with him. How sweet. She doesn't even ask for much, yet she doesn't get the tiniest bit of attention from Phineas. That awning could be used as a sail. Or, you know, a parachute, depending on how things go. Of course, since his obliviousness is limitless, he doesn't even realize what the hell is going on around him. In fact, he's so absent-minded that Isabella's song could very well be an actual song in-universe where everybody around her can hear her instead of one of the show's usual musical numbers that go unnoticed by everyone. Because Phineas is not just oblivious, he's deliberately ignoring her. Visually, this song too is a beauty, with regular and broken hearts surrounding the two as Isabella's hopes get crushed and build back up, but most notably with the colors getting duller and the atmosphere turning lifeless as the song goes on to represent just how miserable Isabella is feeling. And at the end, a mime lets go of a balloon, which symbolically represents… Uh, the waste of helium, probably? I don't know, I'm just tired. So that's the end of my list, but what do you think is the saddest, most gut-wrenching song from Phineas and Ferb? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time! Ciao! Oh no, wait, I should be sad. Oh no, uh, oh, I've ruined the mood.